Hello, class. Um, actually, I'm going to do something a little different today. Uh, as some of you might have seen from a previous video, I've been spending more of my time on hobbies, doing little cartoons and things of that nature. And uh, But recently, I've been trying to work on developing a human character form that you can model and sketch up, because that's obviously what I use. You can tell from my videos. And how to make them posable and be able to use towards this cartooning process. And so here we've got one. This is the first one I actually made. I spent a few weeks, maybe not quite that long and not all the time, just trying different techniques to get a, a human that I can use to pose. And this is just a kid version. I'm just scrolling down to turn off the skeleton that helps you pose it. So it would look like this and it's helped to cartooning. And the reason for that is I was gonna pull up a quick little cartoon that I made a little bit ago. Been doing this for about a year, it's sort of the finalized product. Um, you can check out Pleasant Valley tomorrow, which is in my other YouTube channel that has little animations of all of these things. But, I, you know, not architecture. I have other hobbies. This has to usually deal with sort of futurism, sci-fi concepts. So I do a lot of aliens, do a lot of robots. Um, and this is what they look like. I do an interesting process of using CAD and Illustrator and animation software and video software and all these things to get them produced in the end. Uh, but I find like using robots and aliens are great because I have SketchUp models and I can pose them. I can, can get a perspective I like. And then I usually bring that into AutoCAD as an architect. I'm comfortable drawing in there and then edit them a lot uh, from that point. But getting that 3D view down and imposing them really becomes easy. The problem is people are hard because, you know, people know what they're supposed to look like. And so there's not as, uh, as much flexibility or error. You, you can't compensate for errors as easily with humans. And so I want to, but, but so I always drew those, uh, just 2D, um, which is hard. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, uh, uh, it's not my specialty. And so I wanted to like, man, if I can really figure out a way to get these people in 3D, that could help my process of going from like a SketchUp 3D, preliminary set up the scene, take it into CAD to do 2D work, draw lots of other elements, et cetera, and then bring it into Illustrator to render and then and then ultimately animate after that. So that was my attempt. And so so I think this is working pretty well. Again, is it perfect? No, um, you can spend more time on any step to make any of these things perfect. But for what I need, I wanted to do this. So anyway, that's a long introduction. Um, the reality is, uh, I think, you know, if you were interested in modeling a human head or a body or making it pose or not, I figured, hey, I've been in position before where this might be interesting. You might not find it. So, so I wanted to go. So anyway, the goal is to show the SketchUp work here. I did some preliminary AutoCAD work. So I have a character. The second character I want to work on is this one. You can see I preliminarily drawn this one before 2D. So a lot of the design was set, but I needed to get it into a T pose to make modeling it easier so that that work you saw off to the side was a bit of that. The blue lines are essentially the character. The red lines was what I'm calling the skeleton, which will help for posing. Um, if you need that. And then the gray lines are just uh, various elements of the body that will be broken down as we sort of go through the process. I've already saved this out independently as a block. Um, and this is what I'm going to bring into SketchUp to start modeling. And I'm going to start modeling with the head first, and then I'll work on the body uh, second. So I have a, a, a blank file of SketchUp open. So three and a half minutes in, uh, probably bored already, but... Uh, Oh, well, again, I might make errors along the way. This is a second character I'm fully doing. There's different things to this character than the first character in the to the test files that I was using before that. Um, so I might make errors along the way. I might have to explore things as we go. This is might be a long video. Um, I'm not doing it for any class or anything. So it's just if you had the curiosity, you can um, follow along, even though it's not the most perfect of videos. So I'm going to import... Um, from uh, the CAD file. So this is under female, female CAD export. And I did draw this sort of life-size uh, person. So this is about five, eight-ish in height. Um, it should come in as a block or a group as um, it's called in SketchUp. So there we go, it's in as a group. And I'll just copy this over. Um, just so I can have a clean version that I can always refer to. And it is, of course, coming in flat, which is fine. I'm going to actually work a lot of times on the flat plane, not standing up, and I'll probably go back and forth. And that's because I'll be using things like the drape tool at various points in time, which have to work from the flat plane down. Also, I'll note I'm using SketchUp 21, and even though it's 2024, uh, it's because I'm too lazy to upgrade. And I know there's some things that you might have 
in the newer versions that I'm just going to do old school style. Um, and then also, um, I'm not going to use any plugins either. I am using professional, so I do, I'm going to use the sandbox tools, but I'm not going to use any plugins or anything like that either. Again, you could get more advanced stuff if you were interested in doing all that. Uh, but this is, uh, what we're going to work on. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by building the framework of the front of the face. And I could have probably put some of these lines in AutoCAD, but, uh, well, why don't I show this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump because there's some pre-set up things that I did. Um, you can see I did this one's just all in steps just because I wanted to record my progress so I knew how to, how to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take actually what is the profile of the head. This is actually mid head. We're, we're looking at this sort of like this way you can see. So this is would be where the nose is up in here. And so I the one of the big breakthroughs I had when I was developing this process was actually creating this shape. And so I will talk about it briefly here for a second. I just want to paste it. Uh, I'll have to change the size slightly for this character. But um, I want to show you in here, I created this CAD file some time ago where I just imported this bald man's head and I sort of traced around it in sort of straight lines. Because sketch, again, SketchUp is about simplified objects. It's good for cartooning. You're never going to, you know, it's going to be harder and harder in this program to get exactly a character look. If you want a super realistic character look, there's software for that. Um, you know, uh, but this is... Uh, for other purposes. And so you could see like this is this is the halfway point here would be be right there and then that's sort of his face and that's the same. So I just simplified it for cartooning purposes and I tried a few variations and I ultimately settled on this one. So it's not as deep as actually a head is. Um, I found that convenient. And then there's just a couple polygons to keep it straight and angled. But since I'm only looking for 2D work, I don't I'm, I'm not doing shade on my cartoons in this way. So it doesn't matter that it's sort of roughly shaped like that. It, it works pretty well. But if you want a more realistic look, heck, that's not that many more polygons and, and it would probably get more realistic. So anyway, I, I brought that into the original file in SketchUp and I used that. And I just, what I, what I just copied and pasted into here was that exact shape from CAD. Uh, so you can do that CAD process. Same where if you're not using CAD and you're just doing everything in SketchUp, then you can, you know, draw a polygon like this out in SketchUp, totally fine too. So what I'm going to need to do now is I need to set up a framework for the front of this face. And what I tend to do is I tend to start start with the widest point. Now this this face I didn't do this last time, um, so I'll be curious to see how this works. Is not it's not a hundred percent symmetrical face. The, the my test model my first one I did was symmetrical, so we'll uh, give this a go and see how it goes. So I think because. I really want to find the widest point, even though the forehead actually stands up to there. I think I'll capture that when I do the top of the head and I'll start from this point here. I know that makes no sense to anyone because you haven't done it uh, yet. But I'm just going to, again, make this proportionally uh, to this width here. If I can get this, some of these small scaling features, they don't like to uh, to snap easily. I might have to make it a lot wider and then come back in to get a good snap on it. Oh, the other thing I can do that's not working. I'm just going to strike a line across from that point here to here, just to give myself a guide. So again, some of these things are experimental. I have not done this character. Um, get that out of the way. And I haven't done the whole process all that long. Actually, I might have to grab it from the center. I do want to scale. There we go. Okay, so I pressed Control uh, and shift. And shift made it scale proportionally, which means it's up in the air. We'll see. I'll have to scale it otherwise here in a minute. But using your Control and Shift to control whether it's scaling from the center edge or proportionally or not is important to this process. So anyway, I scaled it proportionally to its widest point, just like that. And what I'll need is I'll need a, a point about at the brow level above the eyes. So I'm going to need to be a little higher than that. Let's say probably about here. It's just a cartoon, so it doesn't need to be terribly exact. Let's get it along the red by pushing my arrow. But and that's probably a little low. Um, so I'm going to just take this line and I'll move it up a bit. Get it closer to the brow. Yeah, somewhere like that works well. I don't know if those are straight lines. It's probably not. So let me go here yeah, and extend this just a little bit further. I'm just giving myself these guidelines for these polygons here. Then I want one below the eye 
as well, a little bit below the eye. So we're going to go here. Oh, that's an in, that's interesting. This is also different than my last time. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit lower than that, I think. So I'll do it here. Um, delete that. And I also want to do them in ch at changes of shape. And so I'm going to start here at where the straight edges of the top of the face meet the curved cheeks. And then I'll do one at the bottom of the curved cheeks. And not necessarily going to need that one. But I'll do the one at the chin. So you can see every time it changes shape, I have one. And then at the top of the eyes and the bottom of the eyes, um, which we're going to see where eyes is going to be one of the first things we do once we get the, the basic shape. Okay. So at each one of these lines, I'm going to copy this polygon. So I have one there, one here, which I might not use, but we'll see. I'm going to put it in for now. Just because you'll see in the eyes, that one cuts through the eyes, and that in my process is somewhat problematic. I actually don't need one here right now. We'll we'll deal with the chin later. Um, so now they are all too long because this was essentially the, the first one was the longest one intentionally. So I'm gonna make these all short. And what I want to do this time is I want to keep this plane pretty flat. We're gonna do the nose later. I'm basically by keeping this line the same height all the way across, I'll be giving the base for the nose to, to build off of. Uh, but I want the width to be the width of the head. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to the middle scale. And um, I'm, I'm going to make sure it's scaling from the edge. Uh, and uh, it's not scaling proportionally. So if I do that, when I come in here, did I not? Get that line. Oh, I got to go here. I'm not Also, I'm not worried about the hair which I actually just realized that was a hair edge on that one. So I'm going to have to fix this one here. Just pull it in because that's the edge of the, the head is actually there, which is totally fine. Get the edge of the hair, get, get that one done, uh, get this next one done. So I'm scaling here, scaling here. It comes all the way in. And then this one actually gets wider at the cheek, which should be fine. I'm going to say I don't, I've never done one really with a curve on the face before, which could be a bit tricky. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure I'll figure it out as we go. And uh, then right here. So again, you can see these are all the these are all the same height, but they're the width of the faces at those points in time, at those points. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to set the eyes. Um, so I'm gonna just click inside this group of this uh, character design, which again, I did in CAD, but if you did in SketchUp or wherever else you can do that, it's fine. I'm just going to copy it out because I want to keep this group together and I'm going to need uh, these as objects. Oops, we'll see what am I grabbing there. Let's see, I have some more extra lines. Oh, I'm still in the group. That's why I didn't exit the group. Let me try that again. Here we go. Now I'm outside the group, just sort of in the main file. I stuck to those things, which I always hate. Thought I had those in groups. These won't be in groups. Let's see. Oh, it's the, uh, they stuck to these lines, which I, I should have grouped beforehand. See, again, those little errors. I can just fix that. I'm going to pull this out to here. I'm just going to do this, put these all in a group just so they don't mess me up. I, I will ungroup them later when I need to use them again. And then I can move the eyes into place. Now I'm going to move the eyes right on top of the eyes just to get them in, set in that direction. But the reality is what I want to do now is I want to set them up to the right height in the face into this structure, this framework that I'm making here. So I'm going to pull them up. Pretty much hit my up arrow to go in the blue direction, pretty much to that top of that, what I call the nose line. Now, obviously the eyes are inset, so that just brought them all the way to the top. So I find if I come down, oh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe three sixteenths, where I'll go down a quarter, because that's what I said. For the inset eyes, uh, that tends to work. But now we can see that they're sticking out here, so we have to rotate each eye. And actually, I don't need the nose line, because I will put the nose line in. So let me delete the nose line. Um, so I'm going to select one eye at a time and I'm going to go to rotate and I'm going to go to my, uh, green rotation, sort of at the inside edge and I'm going to rotate it this way. And I find, let's see what happens before I think I did about 25 degree angle down. 
And so what you want to do, and that's looking pretty good, is that the edge of the eye wants to be pretty close to where it's going to hit the framework. It could be equal to or lower. It doesn't want to be above it. So 25 degrees seems to also work pretty decent for this. Um, and I will do the same with this eye, just in the opposite direction. Okay, so there we go. So we got the eye set. So with that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of finish out the framework for this head. And I'm, I'm going to draw the lines of the face at the flat plane. We're actually going to develop a whole step to go from the from the from this. This is basically the halfway point of the head. We're going to do a whole different set for what happens on the back of the head. So um so I'm going to draw just that in now. So that goes from here. Goes to oh actually do I have this one? It's okay if I it's hard to tell without all my colors and things from AutoCAD what is the geometry of what I guess that is the side of the head, so I didn't mess that up, which is totally fine. I can come in here and scale this back to, to here, if that's correct. There we go. Come out. Okay, draw the, draw the head. I'm just drawing the straight lines first because I have to use the arc tool to do the, do the arcs. And actually, again, the, you know, I'll, try, I'll put in the chin. I'll have to construct the chin in a, in a few moments from now separately. And then, okay, I don't have the arcs of the cheek. Look at the cheek down here, the cheek down here. And I think I have all the lines. Um, it's not far from playing because I don't have a line across the top, which is totally fine because I don't want that plane, at least just not yet. Okay, so now I'm going to continue. I find ultimately if, if I draped, or, uh, you know, if I do form contours, over this whole thing, it's basically going to make the shape. Now, what I find is if I just do it with this stage, it's not quite good enough. So I actually like to connect in these these lines from corner to corner. Oops, I'm going to use the, the pencil tool here. I want straight lines here. And again, it's I think it's also fine to draw straight lines, um, you know, rather than curves and stuff. And for at least my style, it, it looks plenty good enough, uh, especially when you only use line work. This is yeah. This is going to be the tough one because that eye extends out. Well, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens as we come through here. There, and I'll, again, I'm going to do the chin in a moment. Uh, one of the keys is that you don't once where you have the eyes, you don't want things going over the eye. So I don't want this one, really. I want the eyes to define the, the height of the plane, but there's fine. So I'm just going to skip skip where the eyes are. And actually, that's I'll probably take out some of these too. I'll probably really only need that bit of that line for this one. Why don't I go and do that now to show you what I mean? See, because this arc or this polygon here goes across the eyes, but I want that part of the face to be de determined by the eyes. So I just need a delete that part away like that. Uh, so then I'm going to skip those because I want that to be determined by the eyes. So then I'll come across here, the top. Uh, that snap, snapped along the green, which I knew was not correct, which is hard because sometimes it likes to snap straight, but I really want the endpoints. That's more important for me for this process here. So I'll come here, do the same thing here. I got there. I think I can hit the top of this line. Let's move around to try to get the end point. There we go. End point. There we go. Okay, there's that one. And then I just need this one up here. We're almost done building this framework. We just have to work on the chin now. You can start to almost, even though I haven't draped the face. So I think this extra one I have here, it's a little tall for the eye. Not, I might need to pull that down below the eye. So I wanna, I'm just gonna guess. I've never done, you know, I never had this condition before. So if I go to my move tool and try to get a, I don't wanna get the group. I wanna try to get the end point. Oh, that's right, it is in a group. Uh, why don't I do this? Is it going to snap to there? I'm just arbitrarily picking something below the eye. And I'll delete this thing. 
and I'll go into here and I'll just draw that line in. Oops. I guess I was supposed to be in that at that level. That's okay. We'll get it there. Get that line in there. So you can start to see how the eye is going to dip in there. I'm going to have to sort of correct it on this side. In theory, I could, I guess I could just strike a line straight across if I wanted the same height. Of course, faces and things aren't perfect anyway, but I'll get rid of that in a second. Like strike that in there. Get rid of that thing. Get rid of that. Don't need that. And then can jump all the way out. And oh, I gotta get rid of this line here. And come down to that new point that I made to get around the eyes. There we go. For the mask. Okay, that's I think hopefully it will work. Okay, let's work on the chin. So um what I find sort of works pretty decent about the chin, what I do is I'll take this arc of the, the base of the chin down. Again, I don't really need that plane. I guess I probably don't need that one either. So I'm going to move this chin up to the height. You can see because I have the lines, it's pulling the lines up. If you didn't have the chin lines um, already, that's also fine. You could just connect them in as you go. And then what I'll do is I will take a line from this point to where it starts to curve like that, which doesn't is pretty straight in this case, uh, but my other ones, they weren't straight and that seemed to work totally fine. They could be wider or skinnier um, right to there. So that forms the chin. And then I'll need to sort of come out with these lines. I think you can pretty much just go to the midpoint, even if it's not straight like that. Um, so we're going to have to do one other thing uh, to this plane because the, see this see this plane is like pretty square. Um, it usually will work fine, but this one's sort of very triangulated. And so I find you need to give SketchUp a guidance of which way to curve it, which in this case, at least in all the cases, is going to be from the bottom top corner, if you will, to the chin. I almost need to strike that line. You can start to see, because what it's going to do is it's going to put the chin out. If I went, just as demonstration purposes, if I went this way, which I find SketchUp wants to do when I use drape, you can see it's almost concaved in, which might be fine too, if that's what you want your chin to look like. But I find the other way tends to work better for the characters that I develop. So it's more, more of a rounded um, sort of look. You can see ultimately you start making these triangles. That's just what we're going to do. And fill this all in. So I need to come here. I need to come to this one, add to the midpoint, and then add that line. So chin takes a few extra steps. We'll come in later and actually do the underside of the chin too. Like we'll do mouse. Uh, this will do the, the basic face and the eyes. I'll do mouse, ears, nose, chins, hair, and then ultimately the body sort of later on. But you can sort of see we got we got a mask here. Uh, now, what I'm going to do, I could explode all of these polygons if I wanted to. Um, and I did that last time, but I'm thinking it might just be easier just to retrace them. And the reason for doing that is just because if, as I use the drape tool, I need sort of non-grouped objects uh, to make that work. So um, since I drew all these connecting lines here with it, with not, not inside a group, I figured, hey, maybe this will be easier. The reality is if, if I did un the reason why for not ungrouping these, which I which I could do, um is that um I have to delete all the baselines and stuff as well. So rather than trying to figure out what lines are not deleted and, and all these things, it just I'm gonna I think easier just spend a few minutes doing this. Of course, you can watch at double speed or whatever you would like to do to get through this process. And I can always verify that I have all the lines here in a moment.
Okay. So I think if I just shifted this off to the side, I should have all the lines. I'm just going to delete those extra planes and we'll let them come through in the next phase. So I want to make, I don't want the, the lower, those uh, lower pieces in the original arches. So I'll just delete those. I think that's basically, oops, I got a couple planes over here. Probably should have changed like my background color and stuff so I could see the planes and everything more easily. Nonetheless, there you go. I think that's just the framework of the face. It's a little bit of setup time, but quite honestly, uh, you know, not terribly long um, for me for, you know, again, this is meant to be useful for many, many times in many, many situations. So a little bit of time is okay. So anyway, because select all those objects going to form contours and, and, uh, there we go. We got the, uh, contours. Obviously what we can do now is, uh, we, we only need, we only need the plane and we need the eyes. Cause I'm just going to let the lines be the eyes. Again, that's just what I'm doing. If you want to spend more time making more eyes than this, you can do that, but you can see as you move around, this sort of has this nice, nice face. Even though the cheeks are curved, it's all looking good. Oh, in this case, when it comes back in, I did see this on one of my tests. I got to get rid of this little plane here. So I'm going to click in here. A lot of times you're going to find in this process, you need to turn on your hidden lines. When I do that, I should be able to just delete that part away like that. And coming in here, I can do, select the same thing on that side and delete that part away right there. So there we go. Turn back off hidden lines so we can see what we've got. Um, now I guess what I'll do is I will move or I'll copy, should it, let's see if I did that. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to have to do a little bit of deleting. I'm just going to, just for saving purposes, I'm going to leave that over there and put this back on, on the main, uh, area, which is right there so i'm just using that corner to find it and again i have this is just the original framework i accidentally duplicated over so i'll just delete those lines i want to keep the eyes again because the eyes um is what i'll use to define the eyes that makes sense maybe maybe not okay so there we go there's that and then this line ultimately will have to be hidden like some of the sometimes we'll have to make hidden lines so there we go that's the the start of the face oop i got some more guidelines over here i want to get rid of Delete, 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 delete. Okay. All right. So what do I want to do? Uh, ears are so easy. I'm going to do ears now since that took such a long step. Essentially, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. And I, you can see again in my style, I just have these sort of simplified ears that are squarish in shape. I'm just going to draw out those squares right on this thing. Uh, it's not even quite wide enough there, but we'll get to that in a second. I'll just extrude them down. I'll probably, when I tilt up the head and, and everything, I can sort of work on the exact uh, sizing of the ears and the depths. That's definitely too thick, but I don't know what the right thickness is right now. So we'll just do that, and I'll make that a group, and I will do the same for this. So you can see I also just stuck it inside the head because, you know, I'm not making any section cuts or anything of the of the head. so. Uh, we'll see that with the nose and hair and other things that just stick inside the other other shape and hide hide away the end. And I can just push pull this to match that side on that side and this side doesn't matter as long as it's all the way on the inside. Do right group. There we go. So there's the ear. See, perfect. Again, if you wanted better ears, you could draw a side view of the ear and model out and push pull it towards the side. And you might get a, a better, a more accurate looking ear. You could draw it more ear shaped, um, right? Um, so that wouldn't be too hard to do. If you can do this, I think you can figure out how to draw an ear from the side rather than the what I'm calling this the front, right? So if you drew the ear from this side more accurately and then push pulled it this way, you would have a more realistic looking ear. That's what you wanted to do. All right, so let's do, I guess we'll do the, I'm going to do the mouth, I think, next. So to do the mouth, uh, things with like curves, unfortunately, of course, SketchUp isn't a huge, uh, uh, doesn't do do curves so great. So um, I'm going to basically, since redraw this mouth out again, I'm just redrawing it out live. Um, 
uh, here so I don't ruin the original thing I brought in from CAD. Not that I couldn't replace that. But I'm going to have to get the mouth. And then this is sort of the lower lip. Again, you want more detail in the mouth. You're going to have to draw out more detail. Um, and uh, that's going to be fine. I'm going to have to draw. See, this the curved lines, they won't project. You can't, you can't drape them onto these surfaces. So I have to use intersect with model. Or again, if you're using, if you had... Well, this isn't a closed shape, so you couldn't use your solid tool. So you're going to have to use intersect with models. Basically, the only thing if you're not using plugins or anything like that. So uh, I'm just going to pull this shape straight up. I'm going to pull this straight straight up. Now this is the lip. Now I only want the line, but I had to make a solid shape to be able to get this plane, this curved plane, to meet through that surface. So where I uh, now this I fine. I want all of those lines. So having a solid here is fine, but here. I'm just basically going to delete the parts away that I don't want because I just want the plane. Okay, so I'm coming here. Uh, now I'll just uh, double click on this surface. I wanted to make sure I had this saved in case I messed up and I do have it up there. So I'm going to select that surface. I'm going to right click, right click. I'm going to say intersect uh, with model. Context would also work. And then I can... Um, jump out and now I don't need these anymore so I can just triple click and delete them you can see now now the the mouth rough shape has been posted on that form so now we need to give a little bit of depth the lips and, and whatnot so what I find sort of works is if I come in here and I turn on my hidden geometry again you can see I can now select these individual pieces again a few steps I because I haven't over detailed this model there's not too many triangles in here um See if I can, I'm going to try to do this slightly differently, I think. Let's see what happens. A slight exp experiment. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to the way I did my other character. Uh, this line I'm just going to leave as is as the, the defining line. But what I want to do is sort of the inside of the mouth. And so I'm going to select all those planes. I'm going to try to go to move. And I'm going to move with my blue arrow down. Yeah, it's going to do that, which is actually not bad, quite honestly, if that is... Uh, what you wanted your character to look like. I would say that's not terrible. It's just not how I've done it before and how I want my style to look. It's totally fine also. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this away. So I just did Control X to cut that away. And I'm going to paste this in in the same spot. So just for matching purposes, I'm just going to bring down here. I'm going to make it a group so it doesn't interact with the above for a second. And uh, I'm actually gonna bring this all the way back to its original position. All right, that's just to get the alignment. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this just like the eyes, I'm gonna pull this down a bit. You know what, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so. Um, that might be a little deep. Um, bring it up a bit, what's in 16th. That's an eighth inch. I'm gonna go, yeah, I guess that would make it about 3 16 ultimately. Um, and then I'm gonna scale it from the center a bit. So I'm gonna come here to the corner. I guess I can come here to the ends. So I'm gonna hold shift so it scales proportionally and I'm gonna do control so it's scaled from, from the, from the uh, center point. And I'm gonna do about 60%, 66%, give or take. I don't remember what I did. I know it's 60 something. I'll, I'll do a two thirds, 66%. So we can see it's a little bit smaller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and connect. Um, I suppose I could explode this. It might go a little quicker if I do that. So I'll explode that just to make it a live object in the, yeah, in the same plane that I have that as. Because I'm just going to come here and take a few moments and connect all the lines together. So you can see like that dotted line from the hidden geometry is that one. And when I do that, it fills in that plane, right? And so if I just go around the entire mouth, it's going to fill this all in. And then I can hide the lines once I'm done. If you want to skip ahead, I'll be hiding those lines here uh, in the next step. Again, this is just giving it some profile. So if you do a, a sort of three quarter view of the head, you'll get a little profile at the mouth and the lips area. 
if it's more detail than you want, then oops, wrong line. You don't need to do that. If it's less detail than you want, then feel free to add more detail to the. Oh, this is a tricky one. Is that that one? Or is it this one? I guess it's this one. And if some of these don't come through, then it's fine because we're just hiding lines. If you sort of start triangulating, you should get those lines to go. You may have to draw it a couple times. Um, we'll go through eventually. Again, this is not to be super precise anyway. And we're certainly, if I wanted to draw something up close, as we are sort of seeing here, meaning um, like a super detailed, I would not use the model. I would just draw that definitely 2D, right? It's, this is not meant to be um, viewed from, oh, I know why. Because sometimes when it's a curve, there's actually lines that are separate. So there's an endpoint here, which is the endpoint of the curve. And then there's the, which was the original curve of the mouth. And then there's the hidden geometry, which is the mask, if you will. So that's why the bottom line was not doing, because it was a curve and the mask rather than just, this side was just straight lines and the mask. So the hidden lines and the straight lines always matched, but it, that doesn't happen when you have the curve. You have to sort of find the, like there's an end point there, which is just how SketchUp is doing curves. So when I hit that point, it goes more smoothly. Again, I don't think a little bit of being off on that side's not going to matter much for me. But if you really want to, you could always go back and um, fix that even more precise. So I can see there's an endpoint there, which is that endpoint. I'm starting to get it now. There's an endpoint in the middle, not the hidden line. Very subtle to see, but now that I know what I'm doing, oops, so there must be an endpoint somewhere in here, right there, endpoint. And then the tiny little hidden line, hidden line, endpoint. There we go. Okay, so did it pretty well. Um, could have been a little more accurate over there, but you can see even when I start to zoom away, you can't even even tell. Anyway, I'm just going to select all these vertical lines. Might even. You don't necessarily have to do this. I'm going to even do the horizontal on the inside. I only want the outside of the mouth to show. Sort of have a sim simplified style. You know, part of this video, if you've made it this far, certainly you're just jumping around looking at what you want. Um, but if you've made it this far, you must really be using this to to do some some work and one reason for oops didn't want to do that that's okay i can hide that shoot i made a group and it deselected i'm not going to cut this out see basically you just want to come through i have to find that group get it. it's going to be tough to there we go if i did that i'm going to delete that group there we go I could just do it one at a time. That's safer. I don't want to make that mistake again. Um, anyway, I'm partly doing this video, as I was saying, um, because I'm not sure how many times I tend to, at least right now, use some reoccurring characters, um, you know, maybe making some small shifts to clothing or, you know, add glasses or whatnot. Um, and when I want to do it again, I might just watch this video if I can't remember all the steps. If I had the time, which I don't want to do, I would edit out this repetitive nature and just skip ahead, but that takes more editing time. And 
I don't know if you folks out there have made videos, but actually I find the most annoying and maybe even longest part of making a good video, which I can't say I've ever done, but a higher quality video than just these sort of quick screen grabs is editing. Going through, cutting it down, stitching it together, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, I'm just making up things to say while I go through and do this repetitive work, which I actually think this is probably one of the most repetitive steps of this process, although the hair is going to be also a trial and error process, um, which has worked for me in the previous ones, but has taken sort of several attempts to do. Oops, I'm missing a plane right there. I think I might have accidentally uh, hit in that plane or something when I went through, which could happen, but no problem. Just draw it back in, comes back in. So again, I'm just getting rid of these bottom lines too. They're hard to see on my screen, so they're probably super hard to see on yours, but I just want the mouth to be the outer shape. Might do a couple at a time. Live life on the edge here. Go all the way over to here. I'll hide that segment. <laughs> Go over here. Do -do 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 I just realized I forgot to check what microphone I'm recording on. And uh, I'm just recording with my computer. It's not the greatest of quality, but I'm not going to redo this rather than setting it for the microphone, I, the additional microphone I have here. So hopefully if it sounds good, I've got it hooked up. If not, oh, well, again, this is not meant to be the highest quality. So anyway, whew, okay, did all that. Mouth is done. Um, took That one took a bit longer than I thought. But again, there's a few lines maybe I need to go through and hide it in here if I don't get them all. That's that's what this was the segment that I didn't quite have the circle figured out yet when I was drawing the triangles. That's why there's a few extra ones in here. Um I can hide those now. There we go. And uh so there we go. We can see there's a mouth. Again, if you didn't want it that deep, you could raise it up even now pretty easily. Uh you know I can make some changes to it. But you can see so when I go to side profiles and stuff, it sort of has a has a has a bit of profile to it. Uh, it. I have done some experiments. If you want to make the lips more defined, again, I don't. You can take these upper lines and like pull them up, and then it'll it'll cut down to the to the next level of geometry uh, in your mask, which also works pretty easily if you wanted that level to to define lips. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So anyway, okay, we got that done. Let's work on the nose. So now the nose, I think. This is sort of an interesting one because what I found work for nose is working off a of base geometry. Again, you usually won't see most of it and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna do that, although this nose is different than my previous noses that I was working on in my test. So since I already have that, and I you know, pre-experimented uh, with a lot of different shapes to try to get it, but this is basically the shape here. So I'm gonna just copy this out of this file. You can see it's basically just a wedge that comes up and then just some planes to form the nostrils, right? And so of course you can add as much detail as little detail to get the nose plane that you want for that. Um, and um, so I'm gonna go back into the main file here and I'll paste that. I just, I just control C, control V, my PC. Um, so we'll see how this works because this nose is, again, a little different. Usually I've been sort of pulling them up to um, the edge of the eyebrow. Of course, this is a woman, so men have bigger eyebrows, right? So, um, so it might not meet exactly. So I think I'll keep the width basically the same. I could... I might do this. I might keep the width basically the same. I almost feel like I could get rid of these. We'll do that. I can change the scale at any time. Now, this person is taller than my last model, so I'm not surprised I have to just sort of scale out in this direction the nose a bit to, to meet it. So I'm just putting it down here. Um, I'm, I'll actually, uh, this is, of course, all in the group. I'm actually just going to raise it temporarily above the face. And I need to do the same thing I did with the mouth 
which is define the lines, which is just in this case planes, um, which is an arch. You can see I didn't draw a perfect half circle on each side, but I don't think that will matter. Draw that arch. Draw this arch over here. And then I'm going to connect them together. And then I've got this arch, which is actually two. I don't know if the eye comes over or not. So I'm going to find the end point of the line if I can. It's in a group, so it's a little bit hard. I guess well, there's a radius point there. It does start to go off. I'm going to say it's about there. And then just because I'm going to redefine that one, I don't know what that error message was. Where's my endpoint? Should have, I don't, I don't think I drew it. That was, okay, let me try again. And there's a line there. Should be a line there. There's a line. Yep, I can see the blue outline. There's the endpoint. I know I have to draw up a little bit. Number six. I don't know where that's going. Well, I actually know I'm okay because I I'm shorter than this. And as long as I'm to the left of that point and to the upper part of that point, I know I have enough of that curve, which I do, which I do have. So I will cut that in. Again, I don't need this plane. I just need the plane, but I have to draw a 3D shape because I'm going to do what I did for the mouth. Since these are curves, I have to sort of pull them up sort of above the nose and above the nose like that. Um, and I don't know. I, I could, I like to do this slightly differently. I actually like to take these guys and I'll take this guy too and I'll make it a group. And then I'm actually going to intersect faces with this piece rather than the nose. I could do the nose, but I just like to keep the nose plain, the, the basic shape plain, and then just let the lines be the lines. Uh, intersect faces with model. Intersect faces with model. We'll see. That I think the upper one we're going to do uh, some tests on to see to get it just right. Anyway, then I'll delete the parts away that I don't need. Oops, I forgot. I don't need that one. I'm gonna probably, I might have to undo that one, delete that, right? So then it's just the lines that are left there uh, on the nose. Like this, and actually I didn't need that plane, but I can easily delete those off of there. And I think I can probably edit this one. I could have, I should have deleted like this plane before I intersected with models. It's gonna, would have saved me from deleting a few lines. What I do want to do in this case, I want to leave that curve on that plane. Did I delete one? I don't want to delete. Yeah, I did. I want to leave that there. I want to delete this guy though here. And a lot of this curve is going to be underneath this one, but it's not entirely. So all right, meets the eye. I can delete that. Okay. And get rid of that guy. There we go. So I think that is enough. There's obviously a piece still below, which is the original geometries down here, which don't necessarily have to delete, but uh, to clean this up, we'll do that. So anyway, you can see the group itself is just the lines. Um, I'm just realizing I'm going to have to move this semi separately just because I want to keep that line on that face. I didn't think about that because I didn't have that condition before. But anyway, I'm just going to take the nose and move that straight down to sort of it. I'm just using the blue arrow and shift and then moving it flat to the plane. I will fix that bit bits in a minute. And then I will come into this thing, which is just the shape of them. And I will move them down to basically the top of this plane here, which is there. And uh, I guess, yeah, that's right. And then what I'll do is I'll come back into here and I'll just push pull this bottom plane down in to create the rest of that nose. Okay. So now I might want to do some hiding of lines on this um, shape. Like in this case, I don't, I just want this to fade away. Again, I'm not using shaded. Ultimately, I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. This is a preview. Um, 
and why I think this is okay. Again, if I wanted to use a new basic shape of nose, I thought I had already hidden these lines. I don't know if I just pulled up the wrong one. Hiding lines is a key step of my process. We're, we're going to get to hiding lines many times, even beyond just any particular element or even just the face. I think that might be enough hidden lines. If not, I can always go back and clean it up. You know, there's a few little little ones here. So you can see, like, if I look straight on, the geometries look where I got a few hidden lines that I still need to do. You can tell, though, you can almost see the nose because it's in sort of uh, the textured view, which helps in modeling. But ultimately, for me, it's just going to be 2D lines. Um, and I'll bring in the AutoCAD and edit them even. So if there's some extra things, I can delete them. But when I go to um when i go to hidden line you can see all those things drop away and it looks exactly like if you go back to the start of the video you can look at the the cad model that is what the face looks like and so that extra nose compete uh, things for fade away but as i sort of go into 3d view i sort of get the projected lines actually i should probably do something three-dimensionally like that i might go fix that now again not a condition i've run into before um, so if i did that I want to say, I wonder what the best way, because that's on top of the nose. So I can only fix that there. So I might even, I'm just going to give this a try. If I just, might have to make a plane between those points to draw this arc on. But you can see if I do that, it's almost good. I think for me, I feel like that's good enough. You can, I'll see it like when I'm enough to edit it. The reality is, you know what? I'll try something. I'm going to try different. What if I actually did this and I just went onto this plane here? You start to see that curve. It's not quite the same in top view. And then you see it in there, which is not terrible. Um, I like that alignment there, though, between these two pieces. So. Again, I don't know, I should probably change the shape of this nose to be curved, but I don't want to do that work. So I'm just trying to approximate something here. Oh, I don't know if you hear that. There's a cat in there. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm going to go with that. And I might just leave both of those lines on. Um, and then I can just delete what I don't want in whatever view I'm at. And actually, that's not that bad in that profile anyway. So there we go. Uh, we'll go with that. That's what I'm going to go with. Again, you just sort of make it up as you go along. There's a few hidden lines I need to do. I'm going to pause. All right. Had to let a cat out. So anyway, you can play with the nose, nose shapes. That's actually, yeah, it's not so bad, actually. I do sort of like that. Again, I could probably get rid of some of these planes I'm not even using uh, on this nose. But I will keep it because I don't even think it'll matter. Give me a good base to work off. Okay, so there's the nose. Okay, so now... Um, I'm going to do the rest of the head, which I should have roughly sketched in, and I didn't do that. Um, we'll see how this goes. I wonder if I should have. Well, this part is going to be interesting. Uh, I think you will figure it out. I'll figure it out. I got a few ideas. Okay. So anyway, what I've pre-done is I have, because I just did it for the, for uh, the other ones I was working on. I'm going to come in here and you can see what I have is um, I have this sphere, this this thing, this polygon was the same polygon uh, sort of proportionally that I use from CAD and I use for this frame. And I'm going to use to form the top of the head. You can see the top of the head here, which is the next step. And I just basically drew that by rotating the polygon that I used. And then I basically just uh, drew a triangle 
at each point and then drew an arc across it and then did drape right so then it made sort of a pretty smooth line so rather than do that all that again because in theory the point of doing that was that it can be reused again and using the same shape for the framework of the head means i can use these components for whatever heads i want to use i'll turn off hidden line on that i'll just copy this here come into this file here and paste that in here and um i'm going to rotate it just to match this sort of sideways dimension like in the other one i did rotate the face up and worked on as as you saw uh but i'm just going to do it here so in theory if i put this here now i know it's not the same shape because it's you know proportionally the that head was not exactly the same but since i started with the same one can in theory scale from the center points like this and oops because this one is oh that comes in because that was coming out and that face is coming in so it's a little little bit different of geometries um oh i know why let's see that's right this has a half point it's this point here not the bottom point of that um that i did because i will add i will add that point okay so what i have to do is view Hidden geometry. See, it's this line here is actually that line. Um, and this is basically meant to be the base of the ear, which is the flat plane going back towards the side. And we'll see, then we'll do the back half. So there's basically, there's like the front curves. There's like a flat zone where the ears are around the head. And then there's the back of the head shape is how this model works. And so that's what that was doing down there. So I do that there. Now, the thing is now it's definitely not going to be the same size. Um, it is the right width, so that's good because that line. So then I should be able to come up here and pull that there, except for that line is not identical because let me try to. I almost need to ha have this piece a part of this one to do this scale. See, because it's always going to come. Although I think, like, again, that it's going to be ever so slightly off in those planes um, because this line is above. If I just did it a few times, what I could do, if I really wanted to be perfect, I would have to take this whole bottom plane and make it its own group because uh, then I could set this here in scale and it would meet all these planes. But I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to do it a few times. It's going to get so close that the eyes isn't even going to notice it. And just because I think that'll be faster. So like, there we go. Like, is this is not perfect, but I mean, look at how far you have to zoom in to, to find that line. Um, and we're going to hide the joint lines later. So I don't even think you'll notice them. All right. So there's sort of the top of the head. Now, the interesting thing here is this hair is going up taller and you can, this was designed to be able to work. Uh, and I don't know if I should how much I should do. I don't want it to pop out the side. So I can I can also scale it this way. Like it, the head's not a perfect sphere. So like you can scale in any of these directions, right? So I want the hair to be larger than it. Um, uh, but I don't, I guess it doesn't even matter. It could have it stick out as needed. I don't know. I can always come back and change it at any time. There's a part of me that says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna try that as the top of the head, uh, which is a bit, feeling a bit tall but really it's all going to be hopefully hidden by the hair and you won't notice that anyway i just and so in theory it might not even need to have stretched it up oh sometimes when you work in these 3d planes you have that okay so so we'll go with that can always change it later as i said i'm going to turn off hidden geometry so we can see now i'm basically going to take this same shape and then use it Three other, well, I need to do the half, I need to do the, um, sorry, I got to do the halfway point. I got to do this flat point for the ears. Oh, and then there is that too, which is the head sort of comes out there. I'm going to, oh yeah, let me think about that. 
because I did this slightly purposely. I did this slightly asymmetrical head and before the symmetry made it a lot easier. So I had this little bit, I designed a little bit of head. I might, it's so small, I might not worry about it. In theory, I probably should have taken this shape up to that point. I'm not gonna not gonna do that. I'm gonna just do it this way, and it is what it is. Um, and it will should all be okay. So I'm gonna take this guy, this piece. I'm gonna copy it down, and I'm gonna mirror it um, so that fits on that side. Actually, I need the ear piece. I keep forgetting I need to do that. So let me do that first. I'll leave that there because I'll I'll need it in a second. Wonder if I, you know what? Just because I'm gonna try, I don't know if this is gonna work, but uh, to account for this little extra piece of head, I'm actually gonna draw that as part of the part of this flat zone, and we will see what happens. Uh, and I can just push pull that line in if it doesn't work. So I think I'm not worried about it. So I'm coming back down to this plane here. I'm sort of getting inside here, coming down. I'm just redrawing the basic plane of the head. Again, I, I'll come back and do the curves in a minute. Uh, just because it's a different tool, I find it easier to do all the straight lines and then do like the curves rather than switching back and forth. So again, the, the cheeks and the chin now. If I did that correctly, and I did, it, it has this flat plane. Let's all just make it a group for safety purposes. I like to use groups. And so again, the the width, the, the depth of this, I'm just gonna set at the current years, which was also just a guess. We'll see here in a moment. I'll get those depths once I put the uh, rest of the head together. Uh, so I'm gonna take this. So this, again, if we recall, was just a duplicate of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror it. Now I know current versions of SketchUp have, have a nice new mirror tool. Uh, and there's lots of ways of doing it, but I'm actually going to use a scale tool and a scale of negative one. And we can see that sort of mirrored that shape. That's sort of an old school way of mirroring. Uh, and I'm going to push this not to the, the ear piece, but to, to the head. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy this piece this way to be the back of the head. And I'm going to mirror it in the opposite direction. Well, sort of in the I don't know if I want to call it up and down because we're looking at the head sideways, but in this direction and do negative one. Again, you could use the mirror tool or whatever you wanted to do for that. And I will put that there. So again, the how these uh pieces were, I might have to rotate this up because it's I find it hard to sort of get the view. I want it just to look like a semi-real person temporarily to get the shapes of these right. So I'm just gonna I'll I'll just copy these uh, this out here temporarily, and I'll rotate this up so that the head is sort of facing in a direction that might more typically face, and that's just going to get me to take a look at the head better. So you can see like this view because I or artificially squeezed it. If you remember way back from CAD, I did that intentionally to get these shapes I feel fit better, which means I almost want to artificially lengthen the backside. But again, it's all meant to work that I just go to scale and I just eyeball sort of the depth of the head. Like, are they, do they have a big brain, you know, or whatnot, you know, just sort of getting it to look sort of like that. And I often find that the, uh, and you can see I can edit this at any time because it's that easy, you know, as I'm developing the hair or the body, if I need to change it, I can, I can do that. I often find I want to pull this down even, so it wants to be taller. So it doesn't want to be all the way down to the chin, um, but it's sort of, having a little defining of the jaw sort of is nice. So you don't want to go past like there, it's going past the chin line, but somewhere up front of that is fine. And then the neck will come and integrate sort of in a large part of this, this area anyway. So once I have that, then if I show, turn on hidden lines to show this, we can see this halfway point here needs to come to this line because this is flat. That was designed intentionally to be flat, 90 degrees. And then this is the same piece as it extended. So this piece right here is this piece. It's the same piece, except for I scaled it that way, which is why it's larger. So this piece is meant to fit between that at whatever size it is there, which is there. Now, the ears I like to keep up in the front plane, you could shift them anywhere you would like. 
in that plane. Actually, that means I'm going to be able, now that I shifted that to be larger, I can even change this guy a little bit. I could make him slightly bigger if I wanted to. Like, there's room for that. See, just a tiny bit larger. I wasn't had an opportunity there for that. Um, and again, this is this... Yeah, I think I think this might work ultimately when they have this little piece here. If not, all I need to do is take this line and shift it in. Uh, if your face was symmetrical, you won't even have that case. You can even see not even worrying about it. I'd hardly see it in the end. I just easily delete that and cat as I needed to go around. So uh, let's turn off the hidden geometry temporarily. I'm just going to um, delete all of this because I just want to to use this guy and just keep my progress. You don't have to do this. I'm making a copy of that face just in case, just in case. So, but I'm going to work in this direction still. Actually, you know, I got to do the hair next. Well, I'm going to, I got to move into, into place anyway to get, um, it aligned, but I'm probably gonna, I might move to working in 90 degrees here. So I'm just aligning it back. I think I used the chin to get that back, back into alignment, just like this. Uh, I'll build the chin first here. Uh, so you could spend more time on this. I just start connecting lines uh, to get the shape. And actually we want it to go in. We don't want it to be flat, it sort of wants to be sort of upwards, so there's a cat going crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I, I'm basically, I collect one side at the top to one side in the back, so I just start formulating lines through here. Um, it's not perfect, but hardly ever do. I'm going to look at the character like this anyway, so, uh, and I can sort of come up here. I can probably think I'll be able to do that because I think the neck will cover that in. And of course, these lines aren't, aren't there because they're in groups, right? So that's why I have to sort of come back and draw some of these extra shapes on. I think this one is also in the group, which is why it doesn't come up. And that one's in the group, which is why it doesn't come up. And then this one's a curve. I could come here and turn on probably hidden lines and draw... Like this, sort of like I did for the mouth. I'll draw the, for lack of a better word, vertical or radius components here. And then I'll draw the straight pieces. There's one, something, I missed one over there. It's okay, I can go back and get that. Oops. Ah, that's uh okay, got that one. There's, oh, there's a few over here once I rotate around. That was the issue. Okay. Boom. Boom. Okay. So you can see again, I could I could pull out this point probably to get a better looking chin. So points. I want to make sure I don't have a group, which is going to be tricky in this one, right? But if I come in here, don't get the group. Come on. I don't want to make a new layer. Oh, I think I can get it if I'm very careful. There we go. See, I just grabbed the point, and now I can sort of pull it out along the green. I want to do that. And I might even want to pull in this point. I might even pull in these two lines, actually. Actually, if I pull in this point down here. This one could be tricky because I'm going to don't want that group. Don't want that group. Don't want that group. Well, and something like that. And again, I can add the once I add more components, I make it. Oh, yeah. OK, well, that's fine. I can pull in this one too, sort of similarly. Actually move this out to there and I think this out to there might work. Anyway, I could keep sculpting this but it's pretty good for again considering it's going to be looked at mostly like that i will hide all these extra lines that i don't want to see which 
just like the mouth is going to take just a few minutes. I think that's in there. Yeah. What am I at? An hour, 10 minutes? But the, the head is essentially done here. Uh, not the hair, not the body. The body, I think, will take quicker just because I find it for what I need. You'll notice there's a lot more detail to, to the head. And even though any of these steps you could make this a group, uh, any of these steps you could add, add more detail to, but it's the head's the, the hard part to draw. And uh, um, you know, needs a level of detail to make it look human. The body, I, I find you have more, more leeway in and to not do as much detail. Again, if I wanted to do a hand, I would just, I would not model and I would draw the hand in 2D, you know, something like that. This is meant to be like, oh, you're looking here and you're getting the, the basic model. Oh, I even forgot those fingers, but I can, are those there? No, they're there. I guess I just forgot to group those in or something. Easy enough to fix, easy enough to fix. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this stuff and again just kind of rotate it 90 degrees i'll leave that one flat just for reference purposes go about my red axis. go 90 degrees we have this here okay so so there we go there's the head what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just move actually i'll um oh god do i want to copy I'll copy. I'm going to copy this just out in front. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw the shape of the hair. And this, again, might take some trial and error. And I've never done a um, long hair one before, like draped over the body, which is definitely going to require some edits when I get to the body. I'm pretty sure. But we'll just do this now. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to draw. Yes, I'm going to draw this. So we're ever it is round and actually this is interesting because this is meant to be hair back there too it's just out a different plane which is sort of not what i had done before but we'll figure it out here hopefully i mean the experimentation of hair always took took time but i always figured it out close enough Some of these extra lines I might have to draw in later, but I'll put them in for now. So this hair comes in here and then just goes to this point is the way it's designed. Anyway, and then this is here and comes down to here. And I'm gonna cheat because there, there is body there. So I think I can straighten that hairline out. Uh, and then I'm trying to so many lines here. I'm whispering as I think. Uh, oh, oh, so, okay. I got to go to CAD. Check out where the hairline was. So it's going here. I went straight across. I think the implication I had was that it was also following the shirt line. It was it's just sort of simplification that I tend to do. So I will do that for now. So down to here across to there. That's all the straight lines, it's all the curves to do. I should get a 3D plane when I'm done with this. That's the goal. And I might have to put that line in later, but I'll sketch it out now. And there's a curve up, curve up here. Oops, I think I missed the end point. There, and there's a curve here. And there's a curve here without, you know, AutoCAD's ability to do multiple lines. I don't know where the lines are that I've drawn. If I triple click, I can see where these things, I don't want to go inside the group though. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just temporarily delete. Oh, wait, I thought I did all those straight lines. I guess I didn't, or did I do them inside a group on accident? Oh well, people make mistakes, even, even I do. 
know, it's hard to believe that. Okay, let's just see where we're at. Let's do delete. So I got all of this. So I got to do that curve down or that straight line down here. And then the line comes up along the head. It should hopefully it comes up along here. Oh, I didn't also do that curve. I don't think Did I do that curve. I can't tell. We'll just find out in a minute. Let's see. Yeah, I got to do that curve and I got a piece over here to do and uh, that down there. OK. Can I remember all that? Probably not. Got that piece to do, got that curve to do, and remember that. Hopefully that's the end points. And then there was one more over here. Where was it? Delete somewhere in here, which is those two lines. Okay, now in theory that should be enough, but that means there's just some points that aren't quite touching. Oh, I thought it. I guess I gotta do this one. Oh, I did that wrong, I think. Did this wrong here. So I think I have a piece here that I don't need. And then there's a tiny point somewhere in here that weren't wasn't touching. I don't really need that anymore. So I'll just draw those together. All right, let's see. And then up in here, there's a tiny little point. Draw those together, should be okay. Let's see, where else is it not touching? If uh, this is again, more complicated, if I start drawing some lines, we can start to see where things may be broken. And then um, I think I have two endpoints there. So there's an issue there. If I delete that, hopefully, we'll see. Now if I construct triangle, there we go. So it just sort of filled in. Now most of these I should be able to delete and it not delete the shape away. It just helped me find where the hole was, where the quite connection wasn't. So there we go. Oh shoot, did I do that? Did I do that? Did I do that? What did I do? Where am I? Oh, I did it on the original CAD. That's why those lines weren't there, because I meant to do it over here. No problem. I'm just going to, for whatever reason, copy this over. That's my original layer. I'm gonna take this guy, which is the hair, move this over here to where I'm working. I'll make it a group. No, I don't need to make it a group, I don't think. Rotate it 90 degrees. Sorry about that. Um, again, what I did is I drew the hair over my original CAD input, which I was just trying to keep clean. And it's going to be helpful to do the hair in normal human eye angles. Uh, so that's so why I'm rotating it up and putting it back to here. I think I made a copy of it. Sometimes if things don't move like that, like I try to move it from here to here and line it up, it didn't, didn't snap. So I just had press control to go to copy and then it snaps into place but then I just have to delete the original let's come in here and I'm just going to basically take it through I I don't know some of this I'm going to go all the way through the back uh for now and I'm going to push this up to the front of this for now um, and I, I'm probably, I've been going at this for a while and it is a lunchtime here. So I might take a lunch break here and I'll, you won't notice in the video, but we'll start pushing, pulling some of these lines and draping these things to get this hair onto that shape. You can see already, it's actually gets you pretty close, but we'll see what we need to do here when I jump right back on. All right. I'm back for lunch. Uh, hopefully you paused and had a, a quick break. All right, I'm going to actually, I know, I think I said I wasn't going to make this a group, but I always love groups. I love groups. So what I'm going to, what I sort of need to do is push and pull both lines and or points of the hair onto the face or out above the face as needed. So for example, like this hairline shouldn't be sticking out. It sort of needs to be tangential to that plane. 
but then this you know needs to come up to there and so i also might intersect faces with model and do other such things to get this to work again i have no strategy for this particular hair uh, it's more hair than i've used to, to working with but if i just like move that point back you can see it starts to move back and then i'll do the same with this point so if I, if I need to use an arrow to snap it back onto uh, the green, you know, go ahead and do that. Um, green plane. Um, sure, I'll take it to there. I don't know um, if that that point is the right point, but we'll uh, we'll find out. I can always move. Probably shouldn't have done it coplanar to that point because. Now it's merged with the other line, and if I need it, not to make it again. Oh yeah, that's the the face line. See, sometimes if it comes through like that, that's going to be semi an issue, not too bad an issue. I think it means some of these planes need to be out further. Um, let's just see what happens if I can I grab that point now. Uh, let me grab that point. Anyway, we'll we'll keep going. We'll see what we'll see what we get. Do to do to do. Guess I ran out of things to, to say. Now, see, the interesting thing is that this plane has got to be in front of the body, which is going to have, you know, thickness here. So, which means, so it's going to just start coming out. So I think if I, maybe if I move these points or these might be two points here, it's because I had the little, I don't know, which means I should be able to take this whole line and move this back in plane. And there. See, so then... Down here, it's starting to pull out forward, and I can pull this in a bit, and I'll just start it for now. I'll definitely have to adjust it. Oops, still got the uh, that little line of above. There we go. Yeah, if I so if I start doing that, you know this this area down here starts to become defined pretty nicely. See, this whole plane needs to move back. So I'll move that whole arc. There's a Actually, so if I move this, the more I move this forward, the more that line comes out interestingly. So if I, I'm just making this up. See, if I want a little relief there, that's based on how forward this line is. And so if I just want, I'm thinking like the minimal line, at some point it starts to disappear, which I guess is really all the way out there is the most minimal point. So we'll, we'll try that. I think I need to pull some of these planes out when I get a chance to. Um, back to there. You know, this is going to be sort of sitting on the shoulder. But I think if I move this back, that can be adjusted later. Yeah, it's coming around okay. I'm not a huge fan quite of this shape just yet, but I should have pulled. Oh, yeah, I want that to come out. I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out as need be. Um, All right. Let's see, what do I want to do? Let's see, can I get in there? Let's uh, view. I'll do back edges. I'm trying to see that line there. Don't know that I can select. Oh, I do, can select it. I think that's in too deep. At least that point is. So I'm going to try pulling it out so it's proud of the skull like that. Um, and then I can go and pull this line in. So I was just using back edges there. 
It's interesting, when I pull that back, then it starts to disappear again. So it's like a give and take almost. Or I almost need to cut like a line. That's what I need to like. Is just like draw a line about here, I think. Just drawing a temporary line. Where did it go? I'm gonna turn off back edges. I'm gonna draw a regular line. There we go. There. And I'll have to work on that side. Forgot that side. So let's show edges, back of edges again. Let's try that again. I think this could work. Select that line. Move it out, out of the skull. Come on, it's snapping, there we go. And then approximately here, oops. Turn off back edges again, just cause it likes to draw on those back edges. The reason why I did that is, so now if I come and move this line at the peak that I've been working on, it's gonna break, you know, um, there which i don't know why that closed down it's that point right there i can fix that right so it starts to sort of just mold around the head a little bit like that and i could add more lines if i wanted to get this in closer i might come like here and just quickly drop a line let me see if i can repair this i'm gonna have to I think just triangulate this which is fine i like triangulating because now I can drop a line here and I can again just sort of take these various points that I'm just making up and get that a little closer. Get that a little closer. I'm gonna have to do this side first. There we go. And get this one a little closer. And that can come in, you know. Yeah, that, that should work. There we go. Oh, sorry, that's going to be a hidden line there if I don't want it. Which again, I'll come back and I'll do a lot more hiding probably later on, but we'll do that. Um, let's see. I feel like this wants to be curved. I want to try. I'm going to try something. That I haven't done. I'm going to actually rotate on this sort of pull this back like that try to give it some depth as if it's coming up and around the head which will go with that for now i can always pull that around so now obviously back here also has to change it's too deep right now and the other ones that i've done i take it to about the halfway point of course now oh shoot don't look at that i don't know i hit the help button because I merged those things. Anyway, I can do this. I can do this. Take this line, move it in. You know, again, I'd sort of take it in, around the halfway point, say something like that. And then I start pulling these lines into the surface and just let, like, okay, the hair is close to the back of the head. At least to this point, I'll have to build the bottom hair, which I did, or the back bottom hair for long hair. Because it's gonna have to somehow come around. Anyway, I'll figure that out. I might have to draw that in SketchUp. Um, but anyway, um, in terms of this, let's see if I take this, if I move this down to there, and then sort of take some of these points. Oops, left the group. Not gonna work, is it? Let's see. How do I want to pull this in? I can also triangulate shapes. I don't know why that triangle is not coming through. Probably because when I try this for, maybe I'm gonna. I'm going to leave this as sort of the front of the hair. And uh, this is not 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 too bad, quite honestly. I thought it would be harder than this. And I'm going to make, just make a new group for the back of the hair. And again, I'm going to start by 
purposely, I want most of this to sort of be hidden inside um, the head. So I'm just trying to find points, like little triangles to start from. Oops, I missed. Did that make the triangle? No, there we go. There we go. And I'm trying to simplify, but it might not be worth simplifying it. I should just draw each of these little little things that triangles that SketchUp wants to make. I'm just drawing out and over and up and then the diagonal to get a triangle, hopefully. Let's see, I'm missing that line there. There we go. I missed the line there, but let's see if I can move that into place. Nope, it's gonna get the group. Not even worth trying. Not even worth trying. I'll try to just redraw on, on top, make nice messy. Oops, man. I'm gonna just undo that mistake. There we go. All right, let's try again, folks. There we go. That one's so close there, I'm not even worried about that. Could almost, I wonder if I could just mirror this shape over to the other side. Copy. Move. Scale. Twist, negative one, boom. Move into place. Not a symmetrical hairstyle, so I guess that it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close on that side. Okay, so the hair again, sort of coming in frontish of the ear. So this hair needs to sort of come around, and sometimes I'll just put lines on as well. So obviously this needs to pull in, cover that up. So this is gonna like I don't know. I'll draw to that point. See what happens. That way, that way. All right, so that's the hair. This is gonna be the hair. If I needed to find this line sort of coming across, I'll see if I can get an arc in here. Um, I guess the hair is gonna come, really all of this would be hair. I think the way it would look, I don't know. I need to study women's hair further. If I did that, I'm just defining a hairline of the sweep. Again, I can always adjust things in CAD and um, it'd, be, it'd be more helpful to have the neck already on here, but I don't. That's okay. That's not even because I need that line. Okay. There we go. Oops, missed. We do accidentally undid too much there. Try again. Take that intersection, that line, and inside the shape a bit. I think actually, you know what? I'm gonna, okay, got that. Maybe I'll do this. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my gameplay. 
changing the game plan, putting that there. So this would all basically be hair, I think, covered up. So I can get rid of this. Uh, whatever, that line's not being trimmed, but well, I think that'll largely be covered up because I'm going to basically do this. If I can, did that work? Yep, that worked. Do that triangle here. Got to reverse the faces. There we go, and the hair is going to come down from here to here and make that triangle and make this triangle there. There we go. So it's kind of coming down. I guess I can't tell if there's a plane there. I guess there is a plane there. It should come out. I guess if I really want to do a little better, it'd come out to the wide point like that and like that. There you go, some hair. Nice. I gotta hide all those lines and stuff, just like some of those other elements. And the hair's coming through there, and then sort of being pulled up. I think technically, I guess, it'd be here, and then pulled up around the ear. I don't know. I might do that again. That would only be if it's from... I think that's definitely too high. All right. It's fine. You can see how this works. The reality is, you know, it takes takes time to fix. Yeah, I do it there. You know, trial and error and just trying to get things. And again, I'm just purposely setting it off the head slightly. You know, I'm just going to delete this line because that wasn't even a great snap point. Delete that line. Delete this line. Let's connect it right into this guy here. Trial and error. It's the way to get things drawn and designed. Cannot be under, under S. Oh, that was not the right plane. I guess because it's coming across as equal. So that should, in theory, work. In theory. Do to do to do. See, I don't want it to go down. I want it to be flat like that. There we go. It's a little wide. Why did that? Oh, because I pulled. That's what I did differently. Eh, I think I can get that to work, though. If I. Some more triangles on this bad boy. Probably too big of a triangle. Do to do to do, do to do to do. Again, am I going to look at the hair like that? Probably not. So I think this is probably, I just want to probably clean up this here, right? Because that's here. That makes sense. Said I was going to fill that in. And now is the time to fill that in. I think that is good enough. I could probably do some triangles like this. I missed that point, I think. Oh, I'm also interacting with the front plane, which I might not have all the shapes out yet, but there we go. I think that's good enough. Again, don't want to go crazy for this video. Can always adjust things should there be a perspective that I need. There's a bunch of stuff back here. That's the back of the hair. I'll make that a group. And um, essentially, that is the head. The only thing that needs to be done 
uh, for the rest of the head is um, hiding a lot more lines. So give me some time to do that. Oops, I'm just going to copy this over just because the CAD, the original CAD lines from uh, from this thing will get in the way. So I need to see it without that. And there's definitely ones in the hair, which is just working on that I need to get rid of. So I'll just go into those groups and just hide them that I, um, that I don't want. In fact, like even this edge, you know, really fades away if you just hide that line, All right? Uh, oh yeah, there is, uh, I sometimes draw extra lines on for graphic work, so I could put those on too. Like if I, oops, wanted to have a line here. Hard part is, there's, oh, you know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna turn on hidden geometry so I can see that, and then I can draw that and draw on that little detail that I just had in the original sketch. If I wanted to be exactly like I drew on the sketch, I could intersect faces like I did for any of the, the, the number tools. And I think there's some other lines on here. I'll have to go back and check the CAD file. Um, yeah, there's a, so that was this line here. And then I have this little sweep above the ear, which I guess is just hair. So I'm probably have to mod, I might have to model that. Actually, no, I have this whole, okay, how did I want to do that? I don't even remember. I think I have it all in front of the ear. In this case, it's saying some of it's in front and some of it's behind. Well, we'll see what we'll see what I what I come up with. It doesn't have to be exact match either. That's not necessarily the intent. Um so it's basically it's a nice flat surface there, which is nice. Um I think. So if I oops, I want to go lower. So I say there. I'm gonna draw on this surface. Oops. And to do an arc. So that's that line. And then some of these points. Uh, so it's, 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 yeah, okay. I might need to move like this point to the ear. Well, I can actually do that by lines then. That line. I'm going to break it off. Oh, let's see. Let me try. Going the wrong way. Let's come on, come on, come on. Let me undo that. Maybe redo that. I don't know what I'm doing. Do 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 do. Now you got me singing. I think this could work. There we go. Now it starts to reveal some of the ear. That's the most I sort of my model allows. But turn off hidden geometry, just take a look. And then if I intersect that with model this time, I should get the ear in there. It's it's good enough. I sort of want the line up there, which I could do probably. View hidden geometry. So sort of sketching the ear a bit, faking it. I don't want to do that. There's nothing wrong with faking things. If I say it's okay. Yeah, then sort of get the ear pop through there. And so it's starting to work. All right. Anyway, I was uh, hiding a line or I was hiding lines. I don't need to see the hidden lines. So like these back edges, I'm going to have to like hide all these back edges. Let's see if I can do it holistically, which is sometimes hard because I might have like hidden this edge, but then there might be there's edges in here that need to be hidden. And then there's edges on the original surface that need to be hidden. So a lot of times it's just going back and forth 
uh, to the different components until you've gotten them all, because it can be hard to know when you have overlapping lines. I probably should have, did I delete that one? No, yes, I did delete that one. I want to delete some of the lines, particularly with the hair. So I'm just going to redo those hiding lines. From different angles, then there's not enough lines to define the shape. But again, you can always just look at the model and um, sketch it in some other way or put the line back in just as a line uh, when you need to do that. So, oh, did I lose some? Oh, is that a different group? Is this side a different? No, okay, that's one group. How come that? bit is missing over here view i might have accidentally hit it when i was you know in sketchup you click on something you don't realize you're clicking on what's behind it yeah i gotta un I, I so i have some surfaces here that are i gotta unhide which is totally fine right click and unhide Go and oh, is there? Did I miss this one or did I just? Oh, I'm missing that whole head. I must have accidentally either deleted or doesn't look like that one is there. That's should be the original head, uh, which I can just copy over. I just must not have grabbed it when I copied it over, which is this little piece right there. So I think the ear that ear is pretty consistent. So I can plop that back in over here. Here we go. Okay. So it's like these, the joint lines, right? So there's a, this, this shape has a line right across the top, but this one has a line right across the bottom. And so when you go and hide it, you'll still see the line there. If you can make it out, it's slightly faded because it's in the other group, but then different views like this, there's a line there. You just can't quite tell, you know, so you sort of have to like go back and forth and I'll go into this one until most of the lines are hidden. Like again, I'm not personally terribly worried about removing all the lines because I tend to clean up in AutoCAD anyway. And then the same thing happens on the front side of the head. Do 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 So I did the top side, but I gotta do the bottom side. This one's a little bit more because it's got the more complex surface. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, and then I'm not sure where that line's coming from. Sometimes it can be hard to get the right group. There we go. That one is there. Oh, that is an ear. Is that an ear? Oh, I, I, there we go. I think that almost you know that just about does it there's some lines up in top of the head again which would be problematic if i'm looking down like this and there looks like there's a missing plane right there too again which is really only problematic from certain angles so i might not be too worried about it um and then again this line right here that's probably on this piece and this piece but you have to be like that to see it and it's not too hard to delete from other drawing software as you're editing it. But there we go. We got a three-dimensional face with three-dimensional hair. I'll probably still have to clean this up once I get the body and stuff going along. But you can see, you know, it's got some eye contours, got some nose contours. I feel like maybe the nose could be a little more pronounced in this one, which in, in theory I can select this and uh, some of these components. I shouldn't do too much editing. For this video because that just takes time and of course any editing you want just go back and do do it as you want to see fit actually i'm just going to rotate this more like that just to make the you know nose stand out further if that's what i feel like doing i don't know 
maybe too much. Anyway, we'll figure that out later. Um, but yeah, not so bad. Got a little, I could probably pull this hairline back a bit there if I wanted to. This one sort of feels more comfortable distance from the head. This one's wider. Let's see what happens if I edit this. Now I'm getting, oh, I want to, I want to draw a temporary line here. Did I hit it? Did not hit it. Temporary line there. That should be a, there we go. Well, it did do something. It didn't do anything great. So. Is, okay, that is broken there. Probably have to do view. Hidden, let's just show hidden geometry, see if that helps. Not really. It's breaking that plane there, which means I'm going to try this. Did not mean to cut, meant to undo that. I'm going to try to break up this triangle a bit there to there. That should help me move this plane. Again, you could be editing for as long as you want. And at a certain level, this video is going to be too much if I do every single last bit of editing. Bye. Bye. Reverse faces. You know, I could maybe triangulate that out to, to smooth that out, but I think that is all good for now. All right. Oh, there's, I should hide this unless the line's annoying me. Hide, 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 hide. At some point that hair does come break across, so I'll leave that as detail. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Perfect enough. There's obviously lots of edits I want to do um, to it. Minor tweaks, though, so you get the point. So I'm going to move this into place. The way I do it, it's sort of nicely build it off. The top of the ear is going to be in the same place here, so that puts that there. I'm going to work on the neck. I will need this person. Actually, I'm going to have to drape it so I can delete them for now. I'll have to uh, go in the other direction, I think, uh, when I get there. All right, so what I do for the neck... And actually, this will be similar for a lot of the appendages. I use circles, not surprisingly. Uh, and I just extrude this like arms and legs will sort of be similar, but neck is super easy. So I want to be on the blue plane and I just sort of get the center point, extrude the circle like that. And then I can delete. I just temporarily drew that line in the middle just to find the center, center point of that line. We just push, pull this straight up, you know, just pushing, pulling it taller than it needs to be. Um, and there we go. That's the neck. Now, uh, let me make that a group. Actually, I should push pull it down because we might want it to be lower just for now. I can change that as need be. And I'll make that a group. Super, super tall necked lady person. I don't know if there's supposed to be hair back in this hole. Probably it doesn't have to be. I could, meaning it's not going to be up front. It means this, there needs to be a level of hair there, which I don't know. Again, I said I was going to stop drawing hair details because it could go on forever. I knew that would happen because I knew that was not the full triangle, by the way. There we go. Good enough for now. And now I'll just revert. Oh, I guess in theory, I, I pushed pulled this just a tiny teensy bit. Uh, and hid those lines, which I'm not going to do. It starts a minute. In fact, I could triangulate that piece. I just cannot follow through on not. Uh, not working on the hair, can I? Okay, I'll go with that. I'm not going to hide those lines. Rarely we'll need them if ever, but I filled that in and I can now reverse this faces. I should be able to do reverse that faces and still have. Oh, I thought I pushed pulled that one. Well, I guess I'll just add another face over here. 
because why not? There we go. What? Why not? Why not just take it to there? Oops, I thought it was on the surface. Undo that, undo that. I'm gonna get on the surface somewhere out here. Did I get it? Yep, got the surface. There we go. There we go. Hair repair. Oh, such beautiful hair. Look at this. Look at this lady's hair. Make this a group just. Sometimes if I just have a few pieces, I'll select everything. These select the surfaces, and then I can hide those lines. Super easy like that to blend them in. Got a few extra hide in lines there, but there we go. It's all working pretty well now. Got some nice depth. Okay. Let's see. Let's work on arms is the next thing. And these arms, again, are a bit trickier than the arms I've done before because I have these like weird joint angled elbows that seem to, to have worked. And I might even might actually build this out here. I know I deleted this, but I'm going to bring this back out front just so I don't have to deal with the hair getting my way. So I'll just build on this plane and then move the head in later. Um, but what I wanted to, to make this poseable, I sort of have this skeleton structure that, again, I've already made. Uh, this is my practice guy. Let's turn off hidden geometry here. And, you know, so this is the T pose. And then I use the skeleton to, like, move just to simplify. So if I, if I turn on the skeleton and turn off the body, you can see it's just these joints. And then I can rotate and move these things pretty uh, easily, and then I turn body on and turn skeleton off, and the guy's in that shape. Uh, now the thing is to to make the like the hand. This is the piece for the hand. I want when I move this joint, I want the hand to move too. So it's like a subset of groups. This thing. So like there's this thing, which this arm as a part of this group has these two appendages as a group, and then you go into this group here, and inside this one is you have this piece. And then this is a group inside there, right? So that's so like when I move this group, the whole thing moves. But when I move the hand, only the hand moves, right? So it's it's three subset of groups. And the same is for the legs and feet. And then the, the body is easier because it can just be in two pieces more easily. Um, and so anyway, I set up all those subgroups already. So I'm just going to copy this skeleton into here. Now, the size isn't necessarily going to be right because these are different size folks. Um, and you can see, I probably should have used a third plane. I only have two planes. I could have used a third plane in here just to, def to define it, but it works well enough. And these are these little cross brackets things that we see on the screen. They are, um, they are components so I can add, uh, anything I want and it will work. It'll update it all. Um, now, actually, I usually work on the left-hand side, but since I don't have all the fingers, I sort of need to work on the right-hand side, which means I need to take this guy, copy him over, or actually not copy, I just move. I usually, not surprisingly, do one arm, mirror it, do one leg and mirror it, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use my old-school mirroring technique here, scale negative one. Move this into place there. And then so what I have to do is now just adjust the sizes of each of these. So I'll come in here. You can see so that so you can see like this is saying this upper arm is a group. And then there's also the group of the lower two armatures, if you will. But I just want to change this one. It does take, you know, scaling it again, it's It takes some time because I because it means the two pieces are in two different groups like this, right? So, and it it does mean like this thing has to be redrawn to get the new length. Okay, like that. And then I have to go into this group and move this over that way. I just moved it, so I'll move this. Just off. This is the hand. I'll get to the hand here in a second. And this woman is taller than the uh, sort of other person I've been showing, which I presume to be a 
teenager or something. So she is a little bit uh, shorter of a person, which is why I'm extending the arms. There. And the end of the arm actually, or the end of the hand doesn't actually even matter. But if I wanted to see it, I could move it out to here. Extend that line there. Okay, so that's a skeleton of the arm. And I'll finish building the arms before like doing the legs. So again, the way I like to work is to start with um, like using a radius and I'll have to, in this case, use the red plane, right? And I'm, I'm gonna do that. So just at any point in the arm um, would really work. And then I push pull, this takes a few steps. Like usually I have a straight line for the elbow and for some reason I wanted to try this crooked one. So we're gonna give that a try. We'll push that to there. The overlap might actually work and I'll push that to there. Now you can see in this case, this woman's arm is pretty straight. It doesn't really change much shape, but you can see I designed it. That's the upper arm and that's the lower arm, uh, which means there's a slight taper to it. And so I'll do that by scaling. So I'll select that surface and I'll hit scale and I'll go to the corner and I'll press control to do it from, from the center point, right? And then I can scale it up in this case. Let's see. And I might, if, if I wanted to be precise, I could draw a line like vertically out to hit the corner, but, and it's such a small amount, it's like hard to make small changes. So I'm just gonna eyeball it because it's my char it's character I designed, right? I have freedom, the minute changes doesn't matter. You can see on this side, of course, if it's tapering down, it has to scale down. So I'm gonna select that and do the same thing, except for I'm gonna scale down. Make sure you press control, there you go. So that's the, the upper arm. I'm gonna make this a group. Oh, actually, I meant to put it inside. I have to put it inside the skeleton. So let me um, I think if I just cut it, I got to come here. Oh, yeah. So I built these sort of horizontally. So when you paste them in, things get rotated. Yeah, that's just a, a way SketchUp works. If you make a group, it sort of remembers the, the orientation of the old group. Um, Uh, so oh, this is going to be up top. Sorry. There we go. There we go. That's pretty, pretty darn close to being where it was, which is in the center. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing for this part. Oh, so I do that. The one thing I need to remember to do, this is I always work in untagged, no layer mode for most everything except for when I need to. So that group wants to be on body, right? Because, um, that's, you know, I want to turn off when the body turns off so I can see the skeleton and back on and off. So I flip that off. And I think in that case, it's going to help me start to make some of these moves. This, this, I think that one's going to be okay. This one's going to be tricky to do this angle. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So I want to be inside this group right here. Um, so I got to, oops, double, double click to get inside of it. Let me make sure it's working. It's the wrong group, wrong group. There we go. Yep, this is, so I have these two components there for this group. I'm gonna do the same thing, start with circle along the blue in this one for whatever reason is how the group came about. It's not perfectly centered on the skeleton in this case because of this weird, these, these bits of angles and stuff. So I might just again, uh, what happens if I, I'm just gonna try if I if I do it here, if I do it to that surface, it's gonna be pretty darn close doing it at the small side. It is angled, not worried about it. So push pull this out to, I think I wanna push pull it out to here. No, 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 I know what I wanna do. This is also a little different, but it's a little fun. I'm gonna push pull it to here cause see I have the change in, change in angle there and then I'm gonna press control and then push pull it to here. So it has that line. In fact, what I probably should do is I probably should scale it first. Now that side scale appropriately, which was smart to actually start at one end, 
So I only have to scale one. And so I'll scale this. It's an asymmetrical scale. So let's see. I'll start by doing it symmetrical from the center. And get to the top line. Marked off. And then actually I think what I'm going to have to do is move it down. Let's see. How would I want to do this? And I'm figuring it out, folks, as we go along. Try this. Like, yeah, oh, I guess that does work. So it becomes ovally, which I guess makes sense. I could make it wider if I wanted to make it more circly. And do that, and then I have to press control to do it from the center. There we go. That's sort of working. Yeah, that's sort of working. So I that, and then I'll push pull with the control to keep that joint line in there and I'll come to here if I can get it to there and then I'll have to make it smaller from the center point but this one's the weird one because undo control the I'm because I've got the weird angle so I'm going to pull it to here control and sort of make it circle-y and then I think I'm going to have to rotate that surface here to be back. I guess it's, huh, that's the right angle, which I think would be fine because then it's inside the other piece. And so when it rotates, it'll be fine. I don't think I need to scale it up to here, which I could do. I think that's close enough. So I'm going to make this a group, put it on body, and I'm just going to turn on my body layer. I call them layers. I know that's old school. They're called tags now. Oops, I forgot to delete the old guys. A lot of these is the old, which is fine, because I can probably just reuse the hand. It's basically the same hand. Um, let me delete this. And, and let me delete that. Um, so yeah, so actually that's looking pretty good. It's pretty much that shape. Pretty much got that angle. And I think when it rotates, some parts might stick out. Might have to trim them up as on an as-needed basis. But that that's looking pretty good. But anyway, so that's the process for the arms and the legs. Is use these circles and then scale the endpoints, and then rotate if as needed. Like that that one down here. So this hand, I'm going to come in. I'm just going to use the same hand and just scale it. Um, you can actually see. So what I did is, I'll just ex explain what I did for this hand. I basically just traced it out the shape of the hand and then made it as wide as the, ri as the wrist, which is pretty similar between these two cases. And then I sort of selected it all and scaled just this surface in to become skinnier and then scaled the thumb in to sort of match the same, you know. Basically, I just... Um, so just scaling one side in it. Then I had to hide all these lines, just like everything else I do along here. In this case, I won't have to do that because I just want to make the hand larger because this is a, a bigger person. So I'm just going to do that and say that hand is good enough. And I'll exit out and all the way through the groups. So there's lots of groups there. I will copy this arm over to here and I will mirror it old school style. Negative one, boop, and move. I know that this center point is basically that line there. So there we go, that's that arm. Okay, so what I can do is I can copy an arm. I could go and take my other leg too. It doesn't matter. But really, um, actually, yeah, I'll do it from here. Because the leg is sort of a three-parter. It's the upper leg, the lower leg, and the foot. So I want to use the same group of structures. So I'll be smarter this time and delete these things away. Because they do have to all be redrawn. There, just down to the skeleton. Rotate this 90 degrees. And 
sort of move this into place. Now, I'm not a super expert. Uh, basically, a bunch of these these guidelines on this person here is that um, like where the leg starts and where the butt starts and sort of all of these things can be, it's hard to be defined. I like to pull the leg up a little high and maybe the butt down a little low at least to start. And so that's why there's sort of this weird overlap. Uh, and then of course, the one thing is foot feet come out 90 degrees this direction. I've drawn it 2D here. So that's all going to be redrawn. And you can see I sort of have this very simple foot design anyway. So we'll just, we'll just fit that in as need be. But anyway, we'll come in. In fact, I might do this in reverse this time. It might even be easier. Start with the foot. Go 90 degrees. Move it down to it's about the center point of the foot. It's going to be approximately there, right? You got to think about depth. How big are feet? Let's see. That was my hand depth. Hands are usually... Hands are usually shorter than feet, but I have these, I sort of cartoon like long hands. It's just sort of the style I do. Well, that's only five inches though. So that's probably a small foot. Uh, so I'm just going to, I don't know how long a woman's foot is. Five inches definitely seems too short. So I don't want to scale it. I want to keep the proportions the same. Come in here. Move it. I don't know, is three inches, eight inch foot? Too, too big, right? Six to, I'll do 1.5. There we go. That'll be the base of the foot there. Okay, now that I got that, I can sort of work backwards and bring down the shin bone, which is this guy. There, and it needs to be longer, not surprisingly. Legs tend to be longer than arms. Oops, did not snap perfectly right. Oh, so I'm out of alignment. Am I out of alignment? Not so many group lines here. It is out of alignment. Oh, I might not have drawn that perfectly straight, folks. I thought I did, but if not, I will I don't think it will matter, but I'm just gonna stick with my framework rather than what's perfectly straight and hope that that works. Okay, that now I gotta do the upper leg, so I gotta go out group level, grab that group, move that down to this point. There. Now this one's shifted back. That's weird. That line is straight there. Well, fortunately, it's not like a building that everything has to be perfect. Humans aren't perfect. I'll just put it there and delete that. And The guideline, okay. Okay, so there we go. So now we're gonna start uh, with the leg again, same thing, just in a different plane. Start with the circle, start at the end point, learn that that was smarter way of doing it. Uh, push, pull this all the way up. There's no changes in plane, just size. So I can pull it up to here, select this circle here, go to scale, control, press control to scale from the center. Sort of giving that a good old eyeball to the right size. And then we'll do the same with the lower leg. All right, sorry, I gotta make this a group and I gotta put it on body. And just so I can see the skeleton fully, I'm gonna turn off body again temporarily. My body tag. Ooh, okay. Oh, I didn't get that, but. Uh, I think that'll be fine. I can see enough of that plane. So go into this group, sort of subset into there. Draw that lower width. 
Now this is where I'm going to have to come up to this little calf definition. Um, let's see, this is very asymmetrical, but the same process I did for arms in theory should work. So come out to being wide, but then not draw the circle. I'm going to, so then sort of using control to eyeball up another circle there. Looks pretty good. Could be a little wider there, but I'm going to go with it. Press control. Oops, sorry, sorry. Push pull, press control, duplicate it up to this little top of the calf muscle thing out there, which is now move. I might just try this. I'm going to move this guy over to here if I can. There. Yeah, almost like pulls it in, but I still need to be a little smaller. That and then move. I probably shouldn't have done the move trick because now I'm sort of going back and forth. So it's hard to get. That's pretty close though. It's getting getting that little definition of calf there. Of course, yeah, I think there's well, the only issue was now when I push pull this guy. Okay, good. It did come straight up. And now I basically want to match it to that original circle so I can just pull there and I can pull here and I can pull here and I can pull there and perfect you can hide these lines very nice sorry actually I want to take this surface uh, make it a group I'll leave it on. Um, I got to put it on body. I'll just turn on body. I think I can. I think I not only can, but need to look at the leg when I draw the foot. Yeah. Again, I could actually hide the top plane of this and the bottom plane of that. I could, right? Because it's the same thing as like the head. There's a line there they need to hide. And then I also need to come into this one and hide it. And when I do that, well, there's still a line somewhere in there. Oh, there, hide. Oh, that was that, because I accidentally didn't didn't get in the group the one circle. Oh, nice, nice slim leg there, okay. So to do the foot, I'm gonna go into this group. I think that's the right group. Yep, that's the right group. Grouping layer. I'm just gonna start with a rectangle. And I'll, uh, push, put, pull this sort of into place as needed. Um, that's completely off, but that's okay. Make a group. I'll already start to do this and put it on the body layer now. Do, 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 do. So I love working with rectangles um, just because the push pull tool makes it so easy to just, you know, sort of push it in terms of its. With, I don't want to go about there. So I want to go up above the ankle a bit. I guess I can sort of see. I said I, the drawing, I had to go up that high. You can start there. So now this is in perspective. So I just want to sort of pull it around the, the ankle just a little bit. You can see I sort of have this slightly widened toe sort of look, which again, once I have this shaped, I can select on that surface and like scale it out like this, right? And I can go on the inside if I want. I think tend to, I tend to just draw on the one side. That's just the style that I've developed. You can pull it out further as you need to. And then when you're sort of looking in plane, it's probably taller than I need it to be, but you can see this foot Looks a lot like that. Actually, you know what I could do to solve that? I'm going to just take this line, just this line right here, and move it down. Like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. See how this 3D, this is in 3D now, but it looks a lot like what I had sketched out in 2D. Simple foot. And it's still controlled by that point there. Perfect. I think that's good enough. For now, perfect, got that. Copy this leg over. Mirror. 
or scale negative one, as I've been doing. And put this in the place. And those were meant to overlap. That is sort of, you can see how the legs come together. That's how I design this person when they're, most people don't stand perfectly T-posed with their leg, their thighs touching, you know, in that way, when they're actually open, they'll be fully rounded and do as they want. So that's intentional. So there's, there's the feet. All right. Now for the uh, body, which hopefully is not too bad. I will say I practice ones were male. And so there is some differences between men and women in this part of the body that we'll figure out, but I'm going to start drawing it the same way that I drew the male figure. Um, and, and basically I have this, I drew this line in here. This is just a guideline. This is the bottom of the shirt. So like, obviously the pants are coming up somewhere. The shirt's coming down. There's some overlap in those things in both clothing types, but the, the person might bend. And so I'm sort of bending, I'm sort of going to draw it in two pieces so they can bend at the waistline. So that's what this line is here. So that's a guideline for myself. This is actually a, a line I want on the model. And we'll get to all those components. Basically, I have to do the top and bottom separately. So I'm going to start with the bottom and I'm going to retrace out these shapes. Oh, and actually, that's the other thing. I'm going to turn off body for a second. And this might take some experiments as well. Um, but I tend to overlap the body with the legs. And so I was going to draw the body down to here, but it's, it's very low. I might not need to draw it that low, but I can always push pull things away as need be um hopefully pretty easily as i go so draw the hips hips there we go that's good and then i like to start believe it or not i know it almost seems we're gonna sort of oversimplify this too to a certain degree but I like to start with a thickness of a body of really about four inches for a thin person. Um, we'll, we're, we'll, we'll add some, some bumps and things as needed. Um, and then what I'll do is I can see that sort of nice that I accidentally forgot to put those in the group of the body group. Um, and this will have to go into the body layer as well, but keep it out for now. So I tend to, what do I do? I, I start it here. If it comes all the way out, I might just try. That's not going to be. It's going to be too. It's just where the alignments happen, really. I don't think that. Let me just want to check something. I turn on body and see. Yeah. So okay. Like, how did I do it? That's right. I sort of see if I do that. Um, I might need to pull the legs in later on. Okay. Oops. This should be halfway. That's what I'm thinking for starters, because the legs are halfway. Yeah, okay. Um, and so I might have to should have put a line there in the leg and then pulled the that scaled in is what I should have done. And that would have been picked up on the back side. But anyway, we got the sort of butt line here. In this case, I'm just going to use the joint line here. So I'm going to throw a line in this group across like that and maybe about equal up. When I say equal up, I mean this height and this height are about equal up. And I'm going to select this line and move it back to make the sort of back end. And then I like to do it just to like cover up the back of the legs, except for I did not move it in the right direction. So we'll try that, right? So you can see how it's just sort of being almost tangential to those legs to create a rough outline of the the rear end. If you want a bigger rear end, you can make a bigger rear end just by coming back and pulling that line again, right? Um, if you want more detail, you're going to have to add more triangulations. You could add, a, you know, all these things, but we'll see. Um, um, once I soften the edges on these things, that's really going to help a lot of these shapes too. So 
Um, there's a part of me. You know what I want to try? I want to move this line, this bottom face up. So see, I did sort of tangential on this side. I almost want to see what happens. Does it disappear if I move it up? No, it's always, I guess I could pull these corners in if I wanted to, to go more towards the legs. Um, We'll figure that out. It's such a small detail. We'll figure that out later. This, but it's basically the lower edge. And then what I want to do is I'm going to actually cheat this a bit. Not cheat. You could drape some of these lines on, but I have so few in this case. I think I'm going to just dra redraw them on. So I'll move this guy to the plane. See, because I also is that circle, which I am going to make in its own group. Because one of the things I struggle with when I soften the edges, I lost some of these details. Again, I don't have to make it perfect. They were just sketched on in the first place. Um, so if I do these detail lines on its own group, That's that. It'll add more of the detail lines to the upper. You know, there's some shirt lines and things up there as well that'll get into this uh, eventually. But I'll start there. Okay. Now I'm going to do trace out the upper body here as well. Same thing. I'll start with the straight lines and then fill in the curves separate. Or not separate, but second. Man, if anyone's still following along, you must be as tired as I am. We can see this person is almost done. That curve there. Oops, I missed the line, but I don't think it's going to matter much. That curve there, and then the shoulders are curved too. Okay, let's see. I thought that was closing the shape. Oh, is it bottom maybe? Nope. Should be closing the shape. I might be missing something. So I have to do what I have did before, which is delete and see. Okay, up oh, right there. Right there. Ah, because I, because this one's wrong. I might just fix that now. Yeah, that was wrong. And then I forgot it was wrong. There we go. And so I'll do this. I will push pull this the same width here. Um, and then what I will do is let's see. When I did the dude, I basically drew a line straight across, you know, at the apex of the chest. I'll try here, although I might need to use a few more shapes to do this. Um, and then I started when I did, took this, I took these upper surfaces and I scaled them from the center of that plane like this to be be about the width of the arms. You know, at that point. So, I don't know, something like that. Uh, nope, I accidentally moved it down, which is tricky because it is sort of this three dimensional scaling. Oh, I guess if I came here, that would actually work a lot better. There we go. Yeah, so I don't want it to, to go through the arm. So, something like that. Um, right, so it starts to come up that way. And then what I did is I took the chest plane. And then move that out. I can see these extra complicated lines. Um, I don't know. I'll start there. 
So in this case, that was supposed to come to here and it didn't go. Oh, it stopped there at that line. Did I put that line in? Oh, that's just that line there. I might have to triangulate this down a bit. Or I might have to drape. Probably. I want to try doing it without drape. Because I have to rotate it. But because it, it's the curved and the line. And then to make essentially just a ramp. I could also. I could do I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to try to just draw it out. Like I sort of like drew the hair. Oh, I guess I should do that. Should I do that? I don't know. I should use drape, but uh, wonder if I can try something and try to pull this point. Nope, don't want that upper line selected. If I pull this point here, oh, that's that. We have to temporarily delete that. that line. There we go. Do that line, it comes out to there. That's not too bad. That line comes out to there. That's not too bad. And then might need to strike a new line. Say approximately there, that might be, yeah, that's, I think that might work. Um, I'll actually take it straight up to here and then back just to draw a plane to get this started. Push pull. there. Oops. Over there. Nope, it stayed. All right. There we go. I guess it is. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's what I wanted to. I see. I'll do that. I want to do this. Which I want to do. That's what I want to do. Oh, that worked better than the other side, I think. Just had to reverse this face. Well, I think that's close enough. No seam. All right. I guess that's fine. Do a bunch of hiding lines, obviously, to start. I can always adjust this later. I'm going to finish up this video. We're so close, besides tweaks, which could go on forever. In this case, I'm going to have to drape on the lines of the shirt details here. I guess I can hide these lines too.
So, all right. Oh yeah, I gotta. I gotta remember I have to fix the feet, the legs too. Oh, this little tricky line in here. It's, if I can't get it, oh well, it will stay. Okay, for now. Okay, I want to, I'm going to treat those lines on, aren't I? I could draw those and I have to drape them on. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did with like the nose and whatnot and the mouth. I'm going to have to draw these lines on. and do this whole intersect with model thing. Um, can't see because of the hair, which means I'm just going to copy this thing out front again, just to give myself another surface to draw on. And see my base. Okay. Draw there, here, here, here. And here and that's I don't need that line it's just to get the surface and then again to get the surface that I want to try to sketch on got to draw a couple lines that I don't need oops did not snap to the end point there oh. end points end points there we go I think I did that time I did and then do the arcs So then I'll push pull these through. Push pull these through like that. And I'll get rid of the surface I don't need, which is that surface there, and this surface here, and this surface here. Don't need the front surfaces either, but I'll get rid of those in a second. Intersect faces with model. Intersect faces with model. And then get rid of those. Get rid of don't don't need this person at all. Oops. I either messed up or didn't get the surface over here. There you go. Intersect faces with model. Try it. Delete that. There we go. Yep, I got that. Perfect. It's not so bad. Once I soften the edges, it'll be even better. I think it'll work. It'll work. I'll have to do some hiding of lines and some other things and stuff still too, but that's okay. Okay, so I've got that. Um, let's do soften the edges. Actually, I'm gonna before I soften edges. Oh, did I not? Is this not a group? Oh shoot. I want this to be a separate group. You'll see why. So I'm going to have to undo to the intersect faces. Okay. Actually, I'm going to have to un... Pardon my uh, slowing down. I have to make this a group. Did I get everything? There we go. Got everything that time. So resetting that. Push, pull this. Again, don't want to get to the back. Actually... This one could, because it's most likely the back of this shirt looks the same. So that one can go all the way through. This one only wants to go partially through. Um, you know, not even that far, probably. Something like that. It doesn't matter too much. I end up this. Okay. Don't need this plane. Don't need this plane. Don't need this plane. These things. Uh... I will intersect faces with model. Delete, delete, delete. Now the reason why I had to did that whole thing is because I want to make these lines a group, and I could put them with the waistline and the belt buckle or whatever. I may do it like this. Okay, that actually did work pretty well. 
make a group. The reason why I'm making it a separate group is because I'm about to soften the edges of these shapes. And if I do that, then I'm going to lose this line work or very likely to lose some, if not all of that line work. So I want to, before I do that, I do want to just hide the joint. So I'm going to hide the line there, go into this group and hide the line here, right? So the shirt, again, as I said, is down here. And now I'm going to select on this group. I'm going to go to the softened edges, I'm gonna turn this pretty much, I mean, you can put it all the way up, it's probably okay. Oh, I forgot, I still have to take care of the legs. Well, I'll do that here in a second. And even though it looked the same, I sort of have to put it up the same. And I don't know why, I might undo that one. I undid both, boo. I'll start with this one then. I, don't, I might have to hide some of these lines if I can, or just delete them in CAD. But you can see basically it takes these square shape and it makes it look the corners start to become more rounded, right? And where it's done well, it starts to even lose the lines and you just pick up the lines as needed. So it starts to give a curved shape, particularly when you, again, at least the way I'm working on, I'm working on it like that. And so it looks like the body's pretty rounded. You know, again, I'll have to clean up some of these lines and add some lines as needed, but that's pretty much there. So I still got to, I'll keep the video running. Sorry, I'm going to keep edges on. Uh, I'm going to move the head here as soon as I put this back on. And then I'll just do a little, I'll continue with some of the cleanup work of the legs and these extra lines. But essentially, this is, you know, the person. And if you need a, if you do do soften ed edges, it's a, a sort of word of warning to a little bit of a degree is the, um, oops, that did not move straight. Um, you'll have to turn hidden lines on, or you might have to unsoften to, to, to make edits. So like, cause the lines then sort of go away. So you don't really have anything to edit. So I've got to move it just a little bit for actually that hair position is looking pretty well too. That's too much. Now, trying to get this. See, the reason why I'm having trouble snapping to this is basically because it's the softened edges, so there's, it's hard, it's hard to work with some of those surfaces to get in. But I, got, I finally got it. Finally got it there. Hair's moving forward. I could probably drape some of this hair in. Uh, again, I might just stop the video right? Because his hair is coming across the shoulder somehow and, or it's coming back behind the hair. Yeah. I don't know. It's fine. Cause even when you look at it like that, it looks good. It's coming nicely across there. That's all looking good. Um, again, if you want to then pose this person, I know I still got some cleanup to do, but you can see that's pretty much the person, a cartoon person I can do this with it. I just want to show posing really quickly um, before I stop the video and just do final touch up. So go, oh, where am I going? I'm going down to tags, AKA layers. So I would turn off the body and I'll, I would like come into here. Um, oops, I got to put these folks on the body because I want them to just, the head could be on body, but it's fine. I, you know, I don't put it, I didn't put a um, skeleton piece up in there. And again, I could put these on bodies too. And I might want to rotate the head. So it's totally fine to see, because really it's just the limbs that I really want to look at. Uh, and then, so I'll rotate here. So if I want to like put the arm down in a downwards position, you know, I rotate the whole unit like this. And then if I want to rotate the forearm or whatever the case might be, I should have copied them. It's fine. So then I sort of go into that subgroup that I set up and I can rotate this. And then this is where I need like that hidden. Yeah, that's going to rotate that way. I need, um, I guess I could do this. We'll make her arm then raising up. We'll see how that looks. And uh, maybe we'll just try, you know, if I want to change the hand, come in here, maybe I'll rotate it against this plane. We'll just see what happens. Of course, you can always turn on and off the body components to see what this looks like. 
right to at any point but just for legs just for demonstration of legs i'll do the same thing here come in here rotate uh, the leg this is one where i have the missing plane is the one i need to do but i can just use arrows to work that on sort of go into this next plane come in here rotate I'll make her go on her toes like that. Yeah, we'll see what this this looks like. So then once you sort of pose the geometry, and obviously this is a funny pose, and I'm just doing it partially for time, you come on, turn on body, and turn off skeleton. And you can see, I, which I knew the case would be, the joints aren't there. One, one idea I had, I don't think I'm going to worry about it, because I'll just, in CAD, when I take this, export this into CAD, I'll just draw a straight line that connects those points. I could do it here in SketchUp, but realize I should probably put like spheres at each joint. So then when you rotate it, you see the edge of the sphere. If you wanted a more live model that did that. But again, like if I'm here, it, it won't even matter. I won't even see any difference. If I'm here, I just need to draw a little line there. So super easy to fix. And you can see this is all, all worked and rotated the way that it would have. So so great base for, for doing... Um, cartoons and getting 3d shapes to quickly edit and then be able to turn into to nice drawings as a base you know why am i showing this again partly for my record partly hey maybe you want to have custom figures in a sketchup architectural model and they wouldn't necessarily be the style but you can start start to get there perhaps because rather than being satisfied with ones you could download or um you know who knows who knows what reasons you might want to do or just for fun or just experimentation you know you just want to model someone or something and here you go these are the basic steps you have to you obviously this is a complex process it took a couple hours which is not bad i mean i plan on using this over and over and over again so spending it two hours up front obviously took me a little longer to, to talk through things two hours maybe a little less up front to build a nice model that it becomes infinitely useful for me that's you know well worth it and and for what I need to do. So who knows, maybe it's worth it for you too. Maybe you learn some tips or tricks about it as well. And if you're still around at this point in time, I definitely encourage you to check out the YouTube channel, Pleasant Valley Tomorrow, where I use these things. And otherwise, have fun drawing.